Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. It's Friday, so this is a Photo Friday video for you. And I'm going to continue talking about Fuji. Hey folks, yesterday I showed you a first look at Fuji's new X-RAW Studio. And I got some questions about it, so I'm just going to cover them. But I'm going to talk very briefly about another application that was updated yesterday, and that was Fuji X Acquire, which is their tethering application. So the idea with tethering is that you can plug in the camera, take a picture, and it goes to your computer directly. This is great in studio or on location so that you can get a larger view of what's on your camera, basically, so that you're not dependent on, say, things like having to create a JPEG as well, so you get a larger file for preview. But it also allows you to look at it on a much bigger screen. So in this case, the main addition has been just, there's been updates to the camera so that you've got USB tethering for both, uh, USB tethering rather, and wireless tethering. So those are options that are there now and that can be selected inside X Acquire. So this is the X Acquire page, which is, uh, we just, I put the link in the comment section or in the description below. And this is the Mac address. And this of course is the Windows address. So you can get them from there, pretty straightforward to install them. So let's, I'm gonna have to change the camera settings internally here. So I can't actually video myself at the same time. Um, it actually switches out a lot of stuff when I do that, so uh, I can't do me videoing at the same time. But uh, everything will still be going ahead, and although it'll be running, there won't be any proper video coming through. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to change the settings on the camera so that I can uh, get the tethering working again. For what we need for uh, this, because it's set for raw conversion. In settings. For USB tether auto, like that, and now we're going to plug it. And switch to a mode which is not, and probably has disconnected the webcam. And plugging the cable. So the cable is now plugged in, and I'm going to just run uh, Xacquire here. Um, is it showing up for me there? No, it's not showing up for me there. I have to go from applications. Command A. And F U J. Okay. So that is running now and it just shows up here as an icon there. Okay. So because the camera has been detected, it goes from a gray icon to having the blue and black. And these are the options here. So show destination folder. This is where the stuff is going to go when it's shot. And um, I'm just leaving it on the default location at the moment. Uh, you can show the window, which brings up the actual window where things are. I'm going to clip open on that one, just have it set. So that's what the camera settings are at the moment. Um, so you can see that. And you also have uh, your preferences, which I'll go through briefly. So the camera search. So you've got USB and network. So USB is where we are at the moment. Network allows you to use the wireless version of it. File type allows you to decide what files are sent over or what files are saved on the memory card. I would generally save everything on the memory card. So I have a backup and linked software means that this is software that you can link. So I don't have anything linked in this case here. Okay, the other thing that's really important here is that you now have this backup camera settings and restore camera settings. So this allows you to take settings that you might have on the camera and actually put them back again after say a firmware update or if you've done something uh, you've got a full restore done if you send it back to the factory. It allows you to get them back really, really easily. So that is a new feature in that, which is a much requested feature. Now my ISO appears to have dropped, which means that it's not as bright as it should be on this. I'm just going to change my ISO up a bit because I'm going to go take a picture and I'm going to take this from the camera itself. Hmm. No, didn't work. All right, so that will come across here. So that's me reaching across there blocking my backlight and so that just flashed to let you know that was the image going by there. I'm not going to go look at the image. The whole point of that is not for this. You can actually go see my X Acquire video here. So that's very quickly about X Acquire. Now I need to make a change here again for to get the uh, um, to get the yeah to get it back so that I can use Xro Studio. So I'm just going to go and make that change now. Do that while I'm connected, so I'm just going to 
connect it. The USB raw board, and then reconnect, reconnect it. And I'm going to exit out of there because otherwise we will get an error. XRAW Studio is going to open here and I'm going to talk a little bit about a few things with this. First of all, I'm just going to make it a little bit larger. So the main question that I was getting was what is going on with the whole fact that it's JPEG and not TIFF? Okay, a couple of things. The engine is, as far as I know, is 8-bit only, so I can't do 16-bit. And the idea was that I was just giving you the same conversion that we get in camera. You don't have TIFF available in camera, you only have JPEG. I think on the G, uh, GFX, there might be a, a TIFF, but it's only going to be 8-bit anyway. I don't have a GFX to know. So if people have one and want to tell me otherwise, please feel free to educate me. I am not above being corrected, and that's how you learn. So one of the questions I had was how quick are conversions um, and it, they're actually pretty quick. Now there's a bunch of RAF mixed files here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump here to the previous thing, which is a uh, studio shot. So this is going to be a mix of good and bad shots. Um, so it's just loading there. And while that's loading, there's something I'm going to mention here, and that is down here, this little icon that I didn't know what it was yesterday. What that actually is, is that is to show all files or to show just raw files, just Fuji raw files. So I'm going to select a bunch of images here. I've no idea how many. I'm going to just apply a profile that I created a couple of days ago. It may or may not be a good looking profile. Um, but it's set. And now I'm going to click convert and we'll see how long this takes. So it's 11 images. And so as you can see, it's pretty quick. So this is creating JPEGs based on the new profile. And we're up to seven. It's roughly about one and a half seconds per shot or thereabouts. At least that's what it would seem to be when I was doing them. All right, so there we go. So there's them converted and now it's just reloading the previews on them. So you can see that they've come up straight away. The ones that are freshly converted have this little star on them. So you know that they're these ones here. So that's the end couple. So if we go back, we'll see more stars along here. You can see that was really, really quick. Um, now, if I look here for a second, I just want to talk about something that I've already done and I'm going to just show it to you here. So this is a raw file and this is the JPEG pair. Now, earlier I did create a conversion here with XRAW Studio. I'm just going to create another one again. So I click XRAW Studio and you can see that it comes up really, really straightforward. It's just right there. It just has this two dash on it. And as you can see, the one dash is the same. But I have the one dash one already loaded in Photoshop. So by bringing it into Photoshop, so we have the original one here from the camera. And then this one is the one that I've just created. So by clicking V for the move tool, I drag up onto the tab for the original image and I hold the shift key and let go. The shift key centers it as it drops, as it places it. So you turn them on and off. But the big thing I'm going to do here is do the difference mode. And if it's black, it means it's exactly the same. So as you can see that this means that the conversion that's done by the software is identical to the conversion that is done in camera. It's not an approximation. It's exactly the same. So folks, that's a few things that I've been asked and looked at. So XAcquire is there if you want to do tether tuning without Lightroom. It just basically gets the file onto the computer. You can use watch folders. I've already done a video about that. And of course, I look at some of the additional things about XRAW Studio as well. Folks, if you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already to the channel, because obviously I'm doing two videos a week and more, as we've seen this week. And of course, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of new videos, especially with those bonus videos coming online. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I will see you in the next video.